Oh, this is kind of interesting. Bro, no way. Oh, Roman. Oh, yeah. Ooh. No, wait, 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 wait. Wait a second. <laughs> wait. What just happened? <laughs> wait. No, no. It would just be such a funny moment, but uh, I'm really glad I won. Thank you all so much for being here. Let's get some tournaments going. It's like when people complain on YouTube about like talk shows uh, being on, on YouTube and talk show content. It's like, bro, like quick gatekeeping good content. If people want to watch talk shows over your amateur video, then you're going to have to figure out how to make your amateur video more interesting than the talk shows. Uh, we call this Blinders Blind. I find that idea ridiculous. Like, oh, people are hot and they want to watch hot people over me, the non-hot person. Let's just ban hot people. How about just ba make better content, man? Small bets. Queens against ace three. This is an atrocious call. It makes absolutely no sense. Zero sense. We win. Let's go. Andrew. Min bounty. Andrew. I think it's a good steal hand with ace nine. It's not a hand where I'm going to uh, raise call like Francois or Andrew. I'm not going to raise call it off here. I guess the big line is pretty awkward, but get the other table open. So we're kind of on the money bubble here as well. This is definitely bubble felt because it is a cash if you make day two. Uh, that said, 6-8 of clubs for the min raise is too good. And wow, we have now a spot where we might bubble this tournament, but we flop two overs, double gutter, and a backdoor flush draw. It's just a check raise call. It's just really good flop for a hand. It's like the perfect flop for a hand next to, you know, flopping trips or two pair. No small blind, eh? I think limp, call a raise, fold to a jam. We're on the pure bubble here, right? It is a cash if you make it to the final seven, so... Don't think we want to jam for 17, 17 blinds with a dead small, but this I like playing in position. Swing and a miss, though. I don't know. I'm not sure on this spot because I don't know how it works if there is a short stack to bus. Like, do if two people bust in the bubble, does only one like do only six go through, or how does it work? I don't know. Okay, we're through chat. Listen, we are in the money of the five thirty. We got the min cash locked up. We don't have any bounties, but. Day two of this is on Thursday. Yo, everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another stream here on the Pokestables channel. Thanks so much for joining me on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. Special day going on. We have day two of the $530 millions online, Super 500 progressive knockout. We're going to be firing it right now. That's the plan, man. Let's get it done today here on table two. King Deuce against Arno's Limp. Mm. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. A king high is like not typically the best hand to limp iso because you're not folding out very many kings, but you would fold out a few junky kings probably, but not a ton. We continue. It seems bizarre, right? But it's like we have the backdoor flush around the overcard, and it's just like they've bet one quarter of pot out of position. Like we need to continue with a ton of our range. Just fold in the turn. It's fine. Bet in the flop, get a call. Jack on the turn. I think we bet here and then check the river, right? It seems to make sense to me. Uh, what do we do with nines here? I feel like shove is reasonable, actually, but... Nah, I'll just 3-bet call. I'm not sure on this one. 28 blinds deep. It seems really close. I'm pretty sure that playing this aggressively is going to profit. What we can do with nines is we can 3-bet fold to a 4-bet from any of the 4 behind uh, with this hand. But also, I almost guarantee that if we just shove, we're going to make money. If we 3-bet call, we're going to make money. If we 3-bet fold, we're... Still going to make money, but we're going to make less money than if we 3-bit called, so we 3-bit call. And if we call, we're also going to make money. So it's just like, which is the best way to make money? And 9 seems like a hand that can go in a bunch of this those different categories. I decided to go for the aggressive action, which I think makes sense uh, against these good opponents that are opening wide ranges, etc. We get 4-bit, and like I said, this is a spot where we can now fold our hand as like, you know, a close one. Like, we're not going to do it with 7s, you know? I think you could do what you can't do <laughs> as a professional. We're going to defend with 4-7 here. Or like a long-term poker player that sort of wants to participate in the game long-term. What you can't do is play in tournaments when you financially can't afford them, right? Like you can do that if you're just playing for fun. And it's like, oh, one shot and I lost. Oh, well, like I get another paycheck. But if poker is something you do all the time, you can't take that approach, right? Oof, what a turn, man. When did I become comfortable in this? Maybe like five years ago or something. It's where my finances were in a spot where like this was a really comfortable moment. Maybe six years ago. 
When did I feel comfortable from a skill set perspective? Well, I often played tournaments like this and I wasn't winning early in my streaming career, but that didn't mean I wasn't comfortable. And it also didn't mean that I wasn't aware of the fact that people were better than me. It was like kind of a conscious decision to compete against better opponents and and grow faster from that, you know? Like have them have the best of it by, you know, ten, maybe a negative 10% ROI. It's like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm losing $50, yet I'm playing this exciting tournament. I'm making content in it. And even if I'm not, a, you know, the best player in the field, I'm still sometimes going to run deep. It's going to make interesting YouTube videos and Facebook videos and, uh, you know, an interesting stream, right? 8-5 suited, I feel like this is a pretty close hand, actually. In a multi-way pot, in a heads-up pot, it's very clear we're calling. In a multi-way pot, I'm going to call, but I'm not sure. It seems on the edge. And I'm going to fold here. Oh, we got a flush. Flush. I mean, I'm going to bet half pot here. I don't think a big bet sizing... Makes a lot of sense, you know? I think half pot is good. I think it's the most convincing bluff size as well, which is I don't think we're going to bluff for like 800,000 here and try and fold an ace, you know? We got sub hype coming in. Stork Streams, drop the nine month resub. Gets the love of the chat for the man. Stork Streams, get him today, bud. Thank you, man. It's a guarantee. We're gonna try our best. That's the guarantee, actually. Uh, appreciate you, man. Thanks for the nine month resub. Welcome back. Are you ready to go to Playground Poker Club in Quebec? You'll love it. I'm not ready, but I will love it. I've been there before and I already know I love it. I already know that. It's a great place. Open the king queen, get a call from Diego. Ace 10 3. Small bets. I think we looked, but. Ace Jack. Ace Jack. I'll put it in the chat as well. Man, I feel like it's years ago I saw you the last time. Double Buddha. What's up, yo? Welcome back uh, to the stream. I hope you're well. Thanks for tuning back in. We're still here, man. We're still here doing it. Battling it out on the party poker tables. Pleasure to see you in the house again, man. Roman Hravek bets big. Big bet. Two thirds here. Interesting. Diego Kuler raises, we call. Very far away from the big money here. There's not any, there's not significant ICM pressure in this spot. So we just call it 10 7. Oh, man. Just need to raise call here, unfortunately. I'm just trying to figure out if there's any way out of this. Out of, like, getting it in against nines. Getting it in against queens here. I don't think there is. This range contains way too much stuff that completely misses here. We have top pair. I think we need to raise this bet, and then I don't think we can fold. I just, I'm just i just not sure how to play this hand, but we'll run it like this. Against 5-6, this is such good news. Let's go, chat. 7.8 million. We're deeper. We're not going to do that either. It's just right in the middle. Anyways. At Poker Staples, hot take from Phony Halfing. Twitch doesn't care about the well-being of users' addictions. The gambling issue had been in the back burner for too long. They recently signed a $13 billion deal with DraftKings. This is all about money for them. Um, from my point of view, as we're going to check call here with the 6-3, I don't feel as if it's Twitch's job to take moral and ethical stances as to what what they like basically you know like oh those are great streams and those are not great streams they need to have a culture they need to have an identity they have to have a purpose but i'm sure there's a lot of people at twitch that really love poker streams and they really love casino streams and a lot of people that really dislike poker streams and casino streams right but to me i view them as the the platform because they are a platform that's facilitating people sharing their stories about the things they play on the internet the things that they do on the internet and sharing those stories like, I don't think it's a problem that Twitch isn't taking a moral stance in that I don't think it's their place to take a moral stance. I think they have to be considerate of their users. They have to be considerate of their their base of viewers and protect them from undue harm of things that could happen on their platform. Beyond that, I think it's fine. Uh, I don't think it's ever been about, like, what Twitch thinks is cool or not cool. I think it's been about what's safe and not safe in their facilitation. And then the second thing is, like, what a bunch of prudes, <laughs> you know? Like, like I, I have some friends that are, are very against the sexuality or have a big problem with it uh, from, uh, on Twitch. Like, from my point of view, and I talked about this the other day, some people look good, and, and that's really okay, you know? And, like, they can use the fact that they look good as something interesting as to why people would watch them. In the same way that I use my poker skill as something interesting as to why someone would watch me, you know? 
or like my demeanor is is appealing to some people and who I am as a person and that is an interesting thing that some people come here for right uh, and or the quality of my overlay which is like one of the best overlays on Twitch Poker I think the best overlay on Twitch Poker in terms of the tech that's evolved and stuff like that my experience uh, you know I'm fairly well spoken like all of these things are attributes as to why people watch me right and I don't think any of them are good or bad they're just the truth of of the way things are so we're gonna check check here in the king when I hear this stuff about like, oh, sexuality, like, oh, this is such a problem. I just feel like people are complaining about something that is, first of all, a completely natural human thing. You know, like some people are classically attractive. Some people are not classically attractive. And to people that are classically attractive, I don't see any problem with that being the case. We're going to call here for four to one with the king queen bluff catching. You know, obviously they're going to have asex a lot of the time. We're going to lose, but they're not going to have it 80 plus percent of the time. Some people look good and there's no problem with that. And if you don't follow an ethical code to where you think sexuality is is a problem, which I don't follow an ethical code like that. Some people do and I can understand their reservations because they feel that way. But like for me, it's just natural and human. And so great. You want to be hot? Be hot. Go for it. You want to share how you look with other people? Go for it. I mean, you do whatever you got to do as long as you're happy with it. As long as you're like, you're not doing things because you're coerced because you feel like you have to or someone's made you. As long as you're doing it of your own fruition and you're excited about it, going into it with a clear mind, like power to you. Get after it, you know? Have fun. I. It's really annoyed me how much people have tried to throw contrast sexuality with gambling gambling as as if it's like these are two evils it's like whoa wait a second neither of them are evils <laughs> this isn't about it being evil right this isn't about like oh let's figure out what's the worst thing in relation to each other neither of them are a problem they can become a problem if they get taken too far and or if they're abused and so let's let's implement rules and systems in place to where people don't get taken advantage of <sighs> so yeah it's been disappointing to watch all that but it's like I understand my worldview on it is, is somewhat of an outlier in that it's like fairly progressive, you know? It's fairly forward thinking and a lot of the world, not in North America, but also even in North America, doesn't think about sexuality the same way and it's fine, you know? It's like we all have our own experiences, our own sort of um, thought models as to how we interact in the world. But for me, it's just like, bro, power to you. You want to look hot on Twitch? Look hot. Go for it. Have fun. I'm excited for you and your viewers, you know, have a great time. Everyone get what they want. Great. And it's not an excuse for other streamers to just be like, oh, if, if people weren't wearing bikinis on Twitch, I'd be so much more successful. It's like, nah, not about it. I just disagree. I just completely disagree with it. My game is definitely better. You know, like I've definitely improved. I think my ability to communicate about the game is improved as well. I think the people that watch it are really into it. Oh, and poker, by the way, poker category has dropped a little bit from where it was like five years ago. I think some of that would be down to the casino section as well, which is like, there used to be a category of people that would watch the poker category because because the money storyline was the most interesting one, right? Like, oh, wow, you, like win tons of money. And some people were here just for that. The casino section has taken those people in that people are winning way more money and losing way more money in the casino section than they are in poker. So like we don't have those, that part of the, of the viewership, like the people interested in that have a better place to get than poker now, which wasn't true like six years ago, you know, like on Thursday, like the 1k thrill was like the highest stakes thing happening on Twitch. I have been doing work with the one and only Ben CB from Raise Your Edge. And we developed a course where we take one of my tournament runs. We go really in depth into a bunch of topics. We have over 10 hours of footage. I ask him the questions that I think are going to provide the most value, which is why I think I'm the best student that could possibly be in this series. You know, it's just so jam packed with value. It's just great. Thanks for checking out the course. I've read a couple poker books, mostly for fun. So I'm not sure on the reading side. I think you have a lot of great free resources, you know? Obviously you mentioned my course there, win a big tournament and consider it. But until then, Twitch channels and YouTube, there's so much great content on YouTube and stuff you can learn there, you know? Including my courses with Raise Your Edge. You can check out Raise Your Edge on YouTube and there's a lot of great free content there. So, so check that out, I'd say. Open get a call, King 7-7 with two hearts here against Arno. I think check back is actually good to this hand. PGD, what's up, brother? Bro, no way. Spurs didn't play today, do we? No way they played today. 
October 1st. What do you mean? Did I miss something? I checked the schedule to make sure I don't I have all the games in my calendar. Uh, this is kind of interesting. Bro, what are you talking about? There's no game today. What do you mean, choke, bro? We're third in the Prem. What are you talking about? King 7794. The hearts have missed. We block the nut flush. But my opponent can have a king. They can have a seven. They can have flushes. And they can value bet those. Arno is also going to have... Uh, we don't want to have the 10 either. The folds. If we have ace three, we're probably going to call. The 10 blocks those straight draws. Blocks the 10 jack. Blocks the 10 eight. And we want them to be able to have those. Which they can, but they're going to have them less frequently. Because we have the 10 of hearts. So we're going to fold. Or the 10 of spades. Excuse me. I bubbled the satellite to this. No, Matza. 94, I'm sorry to hear it, bro. I'm sorry. Go with a seven, and we go to 10, eight, six, one, club flop. Pretty interesting. What's up, Crooksy? Dropping the 93-month resub. Guess I love the chat for Crooksy. Thank you, Crooksy. Wait, 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 wait. I was 93 months? Wait a second. <laughs> wait, what just happened? <laughs> Wait, 93 divided by 12. Uh, seven year, seven and three quarter year. I literally typed that into a calculator. <laughs> Slowly approaching eight years, yeah. I don't know what happened to my brain there, Crooksy, but it was a little slow on, on appreciating what was just happening here. I think we call getting uh, what, six to one with the back door nut flush draw and the gutter right now. It's not a super clean gutter, but it's a great price. So yeah, I think we call. What's up, Flick? Hello, mate. Big hug from Portugal. Enjoy a lot of YouTube content. Keep it up. Thank you very much, Flick. Thank you, Crooksy, for one of the longest resubs ever. Almost eight years. We are about a month away from, from eight years on Twitch. About a month away. I think I started on the 25th of October, 2014. Which is going to be crazy, dude. I mean, I really want to make it to 10 years, 100%. Like, I'm committed to making it to that deadline and i think i'll continue after like i don't think i don't have any plans to to stop streaming you know but like that's definitely a milestone in my head of like make it to a decade you know fold to the riverbed of course oh roman three bet fold here yes he's fine i'll three bet fold in the spot i don't want a flat i don't want a three bet call this end is just one tick too bad to three bet call I think the flat sucks, so it's three bet. Nice. Let's run to Arno. We have queen deuce suited in position. We get a limp. We check. This stack death, we don't really want to raise our suited hands much. It's mostly going to be off suit hands. A couple of our good suited hands, you know, ace king, ace queen, stuff like that, right? Ace jack suited, ace ten suited, king queen suited, those sort of hands. Um, but we're not going to raise like jack deuce suited as a bluff because we'd rather raise jack deuce off suit, and we have so many bluffs to choose from. So, yeah, I think we just check back the queen deuce, and we go for bet, and we take it out. That's it. Uh, Sin is Wandel. I think the problem with donating to high-stakes poker players is it feels that most of them have much more money than yourself, so to donate feels a bit wrong, but it might be just my opinion. But if I donate, I'll support a small streamer with example gaming content. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy your content anyways. I feel you. Yeah, and I think that I think that example definitely is a big reason why, which is like, you know, People aren't going to donate if they don't feel like it's going to make a significant impact in, in the streamer's life. The thing that obviously hurts poker is like a lot of the streamers that people donate to and the rest of Twitch are, are much wealthier than the poker players. You just don't see their wealth, you know? Whereas on poker, like you're seeing me play poker tournaments with my capital as my job. So it's like it gives me an inflated sense of financial ability because of how much it's on display in relation to everything else. But it's 100% right, you know? And it's not like... It's not like I deserve any of this, you know? It's not like, oh, yeah, I, I, I earned all this. I deserve it. It's 100% mine. It's like, you know, I did work hard when I was given an opportunity, but I was very fortunate to be in the spot to get that opportunity too, you know? So it's just like, I'm very, very lucky. I appreciate everything that comes in, but I can't say like, I just don't know if I'll ever be able to feel hard done by again in my life. I don't think I will. <laughs> I don't think I will. At least financially, I don't think it's possible. Bet on the flop, get a call, 10 on the turn, probably check, check here. If they have jack nine, they've made a straight, they have a better hand. If they have jack 10, we're only gonna get two streets of value. If they have 10, nine, we're only gonna get two streets of value. Uh, if they have an eight, we're losing. Um, if they have a random king jack or something like that, we wanna check and let them bluff. So we check, they pot it, we call with top top, obviously. We lose to jack nine, but we don't get stacked, which is great because that turn card is either gonna make them a weak pair uh, or we're going to lose to a straight, so lose the minimum by checking back.
because we're not getting any more money from those weak hands. Ooh. We have a min bounty here. I feel like this hand is a shove and a non-bounty, but it's like the edge. We're not going to shove king nine offsuit, right? So I think it'd be the line in a non-bounty. I think it makes it a fold. I'm not sure, but to look this up, you'd have to go eight blinds, eight-handed, shoving range, right? You look it up, or seven-handed, eight blinds. Uh, I guess it's like MP2, uh, or under the gun two, whatever you want to say. But in a bounty, we have a little bit less fold equity, right? Which means we're going to get called a bit more, and we're not going to get called by worse hands than this, right? Maybe we get called by, like, queen-jack suited, but then we also get called by, like, ace-4 offsuit, you know, uh, in this spot, which doesn't help king-10. So I think fold is okay. Fold there. Now we have six blinds through one less player. I think this is an all-in here. I think we're all in with this one. Hand is not great, but we don't have a lot of time. And this is great when it folds around to the big blind is in that, like, they're going to call with a lot of stuff and we're going to got a, definitely an above average hand here. So let's see what happens. Could get us back to like 3.3 .3 million, something like that. Oh, yeah. Now, no chop, right? There we go. No chop. No, no. <laughs> if it was the running sixes, it would just be such a funny moment. But uh, I'm really glad I won. Wow. Uh, we're all in again for 13 blinds this time. Yeah. Good luck. I went to Encore Boston the other week. I was wearing running up hoodie, and the dealers started talking about poker streams in New Year's stream. Let's go. That's cool, man. Man, I got to dig out some running up gear. I know I got some upstairs as well. What's your biggest ever cash in live poker? 24,000 euros or 26,000 USD, depending on which currency you want to roll in my biggest but i haven't played a ton of live poker tournaments i've played maybe like 10 5k pluses nine of those being well eight of those being a 5k and then one 10k and one 25k no two 10ks and a 25k so i don't have a huge history of playing live poker tournaments but i've got some decent caches i think i've cashed four of those 5ks uh or higher three or four that's pretty good third in run it up reno main event won a plo tournament in barcelona and EPT. So yeah. Limp Rays. We're all in here with Ace 10. It's good end. You ever come back to Vienna, says War Bro. I sure hope so, man. Rebecca's never been to Vienna and it's uh it's a special place. I look forward to showing her one day. We need a king here though. Rip GG man. Dreaming of Vienna and dreaming of a deeper run. <laughs> $653.60. That's the end of the journey. Sorry we couldn't um win the big money. That's going to be it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching.